All right, everybody. I've got a uh, surprise for you. Actually, hold on here. Wow, what a night. Uh, I wasn't sure the audio was on. Anyway, I've got a surprise for you. I've got Nick Diaz's instant reaction to Nate winning. Uh, Nick uh, was in the uh, backstage moments after Nate won. And uh, anyway, here's his reaction, all right? I'm going to play it for you guys. You can also find it on our MMA Heat channel, so you can look at it later if you want. But um, anyway, check this out. I said, you better do something right now. If you don't do something right now, two rounds. That's what I said, two rounds. Look at my fights, two rounds. Right, two, right. two rounds and you fight me. Same thing. Did you think your brother was in trouble after the first round? No, or shut you it down, shut had... it down. Get the shit out of here. Sure. Yep. All right. My jiu is always there for when I hit the ground. But it's always from the boxing, Rachel Branch boxing. I, uh, that's usually get what gets a fight there. Nate, this was a spectacular victory, and even more spectacular given the fact you didn't have a training camp for this. Congratulations, sir. Why, why would you need one? I'm going to have to pay my boy. We should already be always going to fight here. I want to get a shot from my brother Nate Diaz. The man of the main man. Damn. Congratulations, sir. Awesome. Is it too big? As awesome as ever with the win over Connor Here's Joe. I'm here with Connor McGregor. Connor. You took this fight. I'll show you. I was expecting the fight. How about Los Santos? Give us your thoughts on Nate as an opponent and what went down here tonight. Uh, I took the chance going up going with 70, but Nate came in. He was a. Uh, I thought I took him the first round, but I, I was inefficient with my energy. But I'm humbled in victory or defeat. Stole a motherfucking blue came in. Try to run with it. Uh, he took the final short and I was came in all 70 and, and done the job. He, he was efficient. I wasn't efficient. That was, that was how I feel. I feel I was, I hit too much arms, too much. But uh, these things happen. I learned, I grow. I took a chance, came away. It didn't work out. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I'll face it like a man, like a champion. And come back and do it again. I'm sure you will, sir, and I look forward to seeing you compete again. Conor McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. I love that from the notorious one. Humble the victory, humble the defeat. This night belongs to Nate Diaz and Misha T. Wow, how things have changed. Conor McGregor defeated for the first time in his UFC career. How do you celebrate, Nick? I'm done. Team 209, how are they celebrating? People, people want to see. They, they, they. Yeah, you know what? Right now, it's over. It ain't gonna be a big deal no more. It's a big deal until what, what I said it was gonna be. UFC 196. That, that's why everyone's here. I told him two rounds. Two rounds. Hey, there's two rounds.
All right. The gate tonight was 8.1 million. Attendance was 14,697. Fight of the night, McGregor Diaz. Performance of the night, Diaz and Tate. So congratulations. Uh, the, uh, this thing right now is it's breaking every record we've ever had. Pretty much biggest fight ever. Who's got the first question? Nate is, uh, will, will be here, and Connor should be here any minute. Uh, question for Misha. Congratulations, Mi Misha. Um, Thank you. Can you put into words what this means to you after what you've been through over the last couple of years, and especially after last summer when you, you know, had that great disappointment and now to come back and win, what, how this feels for you? I said that it felt like it was meant to be, and it does. Um, turns out I like gold. <laughs> Um, so I'm just excited to be here, man. And, uh, you know, right off the bat, I just want to say thank you to Holly for stepping up when she could have waited. Like, in my mind, that woman is still a champion, will always be, have a ton of my respect. And if I ever get the honor to step in there with her again, I would love to, so. You know, maybe in your second title fight with Ronda, you know, your emotions were difficult and you seemed like you were able to control it tonight. You're going right down to the very edge in, of the fight. And you, I don't know if you know you were behind, but you were behind at that point. You had to make something happen. There's about two minutes to go in the fight. How were you able to remain calm and kind of keep in the moment? Because you really pushed it right up to the last minute. Yeah, my cornermen are always honest with me, and uh, I appreciate that. You know, they never lie to me. They went in there and said, you know, she won. She looks like she's won three of the four rounds, so... I haven't been able to see it yet, but I take their, you know, their advice strongly. And uh, Brian came in there and basically told me, you've got to go guns blazing. He said, uh, you risk it to get the biscuit, essentially. <laughs> so I knew that I, if I had to risk getting knocked out at that point, that's what was going to happen. But either way, I was anticipating on that fight getting finished in the, in the fifth round. So. Can you talk a little bit about, just for a lay person who's never had to do this, when, when uh, Holly throws you over, how you hold on to that choke and sort of, like, th when you sort of felt her start moving, do you kind of, you know, cinch it a little bit more knowing that? Well, it was under the chin before she threw, threw it over, but um, I just knew that I had to hang on, and, and I expect that people are going to try to get out of it with everything that they have, and I d wouldn't expect anything less from, ch from Holly, you know? She's, uh, man... She's tough as nails. Like, she really pulled the most out of me. Like, she made me a better fighter tonight, and I'm always thankful for that. So, um, you know, she was giving everything she had to get out of that, and I just had to hang on, hang on for dear life, essentially. So I did. Congratulations. One question for Holly. Holly, um, what, you know, can you describe the final sequence in your mind? Sort of, did you make a mistake, or was it a good play by Misha's part? You know, I've, I think that I just have to... For me, any time in loss, I have to be honest with myself, and I feel like I knew I was ahead on the scorecards, and uh, honestly, maybe I felt like I was getting a little too complacent there instead of being, you know, still acting with that sense of urgency. And um, she got in. I should have been fighting the hands before doing that. You know, I let her get it way too tight before I tried to shuck her off. Just big mistake. Cost, <laughs> cost me everything tonight, but I'll be back. And thank you. And Dana, one question for you, if I could. Uh, you know, obviously this scuttles your plans to, a, you know, a large way having, you know, the people who lost. Uh, how do you now go ahead with USC 200? Does Frankie Edgar get a title shot? Where do, where do you go? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how this thing, how this thing plays out. Um, you know, t we, we weren't planning 200 till tonight played out anyway. So it, it's not like, listen, in 16 years in this business, the one thing you don't ever do is think you know what's going to happen because you don't. Well, I always say the odds makers in this town are nuts. They are nuts. And lastly, George was sitting here, and it didn't seem to be a coincidence that Connor's talking about he's fighting at 170, and all of a sudden George was in the house. Was nah, that was, trust that? me, that was a coincidence. There, there was no plan to have uh, other people were asking me tonight, was, was he going to call out George? or was none, That was never, in, never a plan. Well, I guess just to build on that, uh, are, was there any discussion at all, though, with George? I mean, that's always the rumor is whether he'll come back or not. Was there any... Any movement it's still a that. rumor. I mean, I, 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 George just wanted to come to the fights tonight. You know, have we been talking to George? Yes, we have. But who knows? I, I honestly, right here, right now, don't know if George still wants to fight. I, I, I don't know. Fair enough. And, of course, no matchmake. But with this loss with Connor, is the primary responsibility for him right now is to go back to 145 and, and defend that title? I mean, I think that's what makes sense. You know what I mean? I mean, tonight, tonight was one of those nights. This was a fight. 
This is what this thing was built to be. This is what it was, uh, you know, everything that we talked about, and it lived up to everything that it was supposed to be. You know, it, it, was, uh, it was awesome. I mean, that, that fight was, I was saying to these guys earlier, so many celebrities tonight were, were, were interacting. When you deal with people who've seen it all, done it all, been everywhere, the big sporting events and everything, and everybody's standing around going, holy shit, what just happened? That's fun. You know what I mean? Tonight, tonight was, a, was, a, was a great night. The co-main and main event were, were amazing. Look good for Misha, please. Talk about uh, your mentality. You talked about the fifth round, but I want to know the third and the fourth round. I mean, things were so close. You, you almost finished it early on. It slips out of your hand, and then she's, she's picking up rounds. Your offense is kind of slowing down a little bit. Did, did, in your head, did you ever feel like this is slipping away from you a little bit? I mean, I, I had to be honest with myself at that point, too, and I looked to my cornermen a lot, a lot for guidance there because I, I don't know for sure, but um, I felt like, you know, yeah, she was getting the better of me a little bit on the feet. I feel like I've improved a lot there to even be able to hang with someone of her caliber and, you know, do what I did there. So I am happy with that, but, um, yeah, she was definitely, I feel like, edging me out. And I thought in the fifth round, you know, I've just got to give it everything that I have. I've got to gut it out, and I've got I've to finish this fight. So um, that's, that's what I was looking to do. And uh, you talked about coming to this fight, how refreshing it was to not have to deal with the whole Ronda angle and all the emotion and all that. But it seems like this fight now sets up another fight with Ronda. So I'm sure you want to enjoy the moment. But, um, I mean, does that feel like the right move for you to in the next fight? The right move feels, what, it feels like drinking a Budweiser and eating cupcakes. <laughs> that's what the right move feels like and then I will talk to my I know um, KHI in my management team and we will discuss what's next and we'll talk to UFC um, you know my job as a champion is to fight the, the next best person so uh, whoever that is I will fight him thanks Misha and just quickly like for Corey um, I think your, your fight tonight was one that people were debating a lot obviously they started talking about the main and co-main afterwards but people were saying you know how did this fight play out how did you have this thing scored how did your corner score it and, and did you feel like the, the, uh, the decision and the scores were just I mean I can say I, be honest and say I didn't think it was going to be a 30-27 at all um, in the corner Mark Henry said the first round you could have lost second round that was yours but third round you got to go out and seal the deal and get the split decision when they said 30 27 I kind of got worried I didn't know which way it would go see that he caught my kick and took me down and I'll be honest and say I don't think I dominated like I should have but I definitely feel I got the win question for Misha congratulations of course on the win you know the emotion of the moment obviously you celebrated in that moment I mean can you kind of describe you know what it was like you know feeling that versus maybe your first title win and everything you've gone through to get here because I know it was a lot it's really hard to put into words but I did tell Brian that it will be a red boxer brief night <laughs> Uh, and a question for Holly. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you had such a big win over Ronda and obviously everything with that. But, uh, you know, when you have a, a fight like this, I mean, is it just back to the drawing board? Is it, you know, can you reflect on this? I mean, obviously, you've had to deal with the defeat before in your boxing career. But, I mean, how, how are you processing it right now? Because I know it's never easy to go through a defeat. It isn't easy, but it's a growing experience. I mean, there's always these odds on paper, I always say, but... <clears throat> For me, it's always 50-50 when you get in there. There's a winner and a loser, and that's all there is to it. And um, tonight, I do feel like I was doing enough to win the fight. She had a great second round. I felt like, I mean, I had one, three, and four, and even five until I slipped up there. And, um, you know, it's a learning experience for me. I should have been fighting those hands right away. And, you know, I should have just uh, not gotten so complacent. I just, I just feel like I didn't have, you know, I kind of let my guard down a little too soon and it cost me the fight. And a question for Connor, uh, right here, Connor. Uh, obviously, I know it's a tough night. You know, you, 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 you go in there obviously up two weight classes. Obviously, I know you know, at the end of the day, you did have respect for Nate Diaz. But kind of walk me through your emotions right now. I mean, obviously it was a big night for you and a, and a big moment for the, for the company, but what are you feeling right now? Um, you know, it's a, it's a bitter, Bitter pill to swallow. Um, I I, t I took a shot. I went went at it. Um, I feel I was simply ineff inefficient with my, my energy. Usually, I fight a man in in the division I am champion in, and they they crumble under those shots. Um, but Nate took them very well. The big the the weight 
I think allowed him to take those shots well. So I think with a little bit of uh, an adjustment and a recognition that the bigger man, you must be a bit more efficient with your striking. You must not put everything into the shots. Um, but I was simply inefficient with my energy. I made some errors. Um, you know, hats off to Nate. He fought very well. He stayed in there. A lot of people have crumbled under the shots, and his range was um, a factor. My right, my left hand was falling short sometimes. The wheel kicks didn't really. My wheel kicks weren't. I threw them and missed them one, once or twice. Maybe hit a glove, and I think they done more to my energy than they did to his energy. And it was simply a battle of energy in there, and I and he got the better of that. So yeah, this is. This is the game. We win some, we lose some. I will never shy away from a challenge. I will never shy away from um, defeat or, w you know, th this, is, this is part of the game. So I'm happy to come out there, continue and stay in, in this fight. I had many chances to not uh, do, do this and, and sit and wait, but um, I went in. I, I, took, I took the fight and it didn't pay off. This is the fight business. It's another day. I'll come back. And I, I almost hate. I almost hate even asking you this question, Connor, because obviously you fought at lightweight before. You were a lightweight champion before. But does this, you know, what what direction does this put you in for what's next? I mean, is is it a featherweight title defense? Have you? I mean, it, I know it's even hard to process this on the night. But are, are, where is your where is your mind at with that? Um. I don't know. I think. I know there's a lot of people celebrating this um, in the featherweight division. There are many people celebrating another man's victory. It's something that I cannot understand how somebody not involved can celebrate another man's victory. At the end of the day, I am the featherweight world champion. I feel it is right to go back down and remind them um, of what, what I achieved and what I done to that division. And, but. I am not forgetting about the 155 pound division. I am not certainly forgetting about the 170 pound division. I actually enjoyed, I enjoyed the fact that the shots, I enjoyed the fact that a person could take the shots and keep coming. He kept his composure. He went into almost autopilot mode with the shots. His face was bust up and I went into panic mode. There was just a shift of energy and he capitalized on it. I think with a bit of adjustment and a recognition that the, the heavier man can take, it must take more than one, more than two, more than three to put the, the heavier man away. Um, I think if I can win with that mindset at a heavier weight, um, I, I will do fine again. But um, I think next is probably go back down and defend my featherweight crown. Thank you, Connor. Holly, uh, Holly, obviously your competitive spirit, you know, drove this decision to fight Misha now. How do you honestly, like Monday morning quarterback this situation, how do you get better and, and do you want to fight Misha UFC 200? I want to fight Misha tomorrow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, she would want the same thing, you know. She's, she's been around the sport a long time. I, I, I'm more anxious to get in and train right now than I have been in a long time. Um, I mean, I... Everybody keeps, before this fight, a lot of people, why are you taking this fight? You should wait for the rematch. What? You know what? I'm, I'm in it to fight. That's what I'm in it for. And tonight I made some mistakes. And that's all it comes down to. I need to fix those mistakes. And I'm going to come back stronger. Um, you know, Misha capitalized. And I've said this from the beginning. She's a scrapper, you know. She can be behind in a fight and she can still finish. And I let my guard down. And it cost me the fight. It cost me the fight. So the next thing I want to do is go into, I want to get back in the gym and get better. You know, there's a, this is a whole different fight I had. And uh, I do feel like my whole MMA career has been on this, like, kind of, like, fast course, which I love. I want the challenge. And uh, I wanted to take this challenge. And I want to get it back in there. I want to rematch. Or whoever they'll set up a fight with, I want that. I'm here to fight. Thank you so much. And Connor, uh, was there anything to this fight where 170 played a huge deal? I mean, what was the biggest deal about moving up to 170 in this fight? You know, I, I, I don't. It, it is what it is. He was a heavier It was simply me fighting a heavier man, and that's it. But he, can, he could take a, a hell of a shot. And he's, 
you know, him and Nick have that kind of style, you know, they, they can take it and, and remain in there and remain in your face. Um, to, in the second round, I was hitting glove. He was, he, his range, he was coming close and we, I was hitting glove and that was kind of draining me. Um, he was just simply more efficient with his energy. Um, stayed in my face, capitalized on it. I, I make no excuses. This is, it is what it is. I, 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 was, uh, I came up short. I took a chance, it didn't pay off. I'll be back. Thank you, guys. Connor, you talked about your willingness to take risks and do things that other fighters wouldn't do, and largely I think it's because they want to avoid moments like this. You know, it's, it's easier to play it safe. Um, any regrets at all that, that now that you've lost that maybe it would have been easier just to stay at 145? Absolutely, absolutely none. Um, I, I enjoyed the whole experience. I, when, when Dos Anjos pulled and I got Nate, I was actually relishing the, the, the opportunity to step in there against Nate. I, I have always enjoyed Nate and Nick and their fighting approach and even the build up. I had I had a lot of fun in it, like listening to some of the things he was saying. Um I ha I had fun in there and the fight was a fun fight as well. He stayed in there, we talked, we were verbal. It, it was it was an enjoyable fight. I would have liked him to be a little bit more efficient and not and not and not give in, in towards the end of the second, but um we live and we learn. It's been a hallmark of yours to kind of fight frequently, but now that you know finally the win streak has ended, is it time to take a little time off and enjoy yourself, or do you feel like you want to get back in there quickly? You know, I haven't stopped. I haven't stopped in a long time. It seems I mean, it's been a crazy couple of years. I've only really burst onto the scene and climbed all the way. And, uh, but I'm still really enjoying it. I'm not tired of it. Now, go back down to the, to, the, to the featherweight division, I'd say, I'd imagine will be what is next. Um, I don't know, I still, I still feel UFC 200 is, is there for me, but I'll, I'll go back and sit. I'm, I'm not cut, I'm not, um, I'm simply heartbroken, uh, and that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll pick myself up and we'll figure it out in the morning. Thanks, Connor. And just quickly, if I could, for Amanda, I know you were wanting to make a statement and, and really earn yourself a title shot. Um, a big win for you, but a difficult third round. So to think about maybe, you know, a five-round fight in your near future, do you feel you did enough, or do you feel like it's going to take some time? Uh, yeah, I, I, feel a, I feel a little bit the third round, but I finish, you know? I finish strong. And is my next step, it helps to to fight for the belt, you know? I think I deserve. I think Holly have to fight Ronda Rousey, and I'm the next, I wanna fight Misha. You know, I think I'm, a, I'm, I'm around for a long time, you know? I think now is, is the, best, the best time, you know? What do you think, Misha? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm here as a champ. I gotta fight whoever they put in there, so um, I didn't get to catch all of your fight, but what I saw, you looked amazing. And, uh, you know, if that's what they deem is next, then my job is to, to fight. Then we're going to wait, you know, to see. I hope Dan White is giving me this opportunity. Thank you. And since Nate is here, if I could just do one quickly for Nate. Congratulations. That was a huge win for you tonight. It was, it was a tough battle for you early on. He was having some success. You said you thought you were going to have a slow start. But was there any point at all during that stretch where you said, this is not going to be my night? No, I felt like um, obviously I was going to have a slow start. I didn't have a camp, so I knew I knew uh start slow, warm up, pick up as I go. And, uh, you know, I didn't have no sparring, so uh, I think I fucking uh, should have dodged uh, that punch a little better. But I had a slow start, so I knew I didn't win. It reminded me when, when I fought Kurt Pellegrino, my, my corner jumped in, and they were like yelling, and I was like, hold up, I'm warmed up now, so... Uh, I figured it would probably go something like that with a little less damage. Uh, Connor, you said in an interview last year, uh, just down here at the at the back, mate. Uh, you said in an interview last year that your previous defeat to this in 2010, tapping out, uh, ate you alive. Do you think doing that again is is, is going to similarly kind of hurt for a long, long time? <laughs> You're damn right. I, it's it will be a it's a tough pill to swallow, but. Yeah. 
We can either run from adversity or we can face our adversity head on and conquer it. And that's what I plan to do. Um, it wasn't ideal. I got caught. It is what it is. I'll face it. I'll take it on the chin. And I'll carry on. I'll learn from it. And, and that's it. Thanks. And just quickly to Nate. Nate, where do you go from here? What, what would you like to do next? I'm at the top, so it's their call. What's next? We'll see what happens. Thanks. Just an update for you guys. Uh, new attendance number 14,898 is the final number. 14,898. Brett, go ahead. Question for Nate. If I'm remembering the evening correctly, your first words after the win were, were basically, I'm, I'm not surprised, mother effers. And was that kind of a message that to everyone else that, that maybe they doubted you a little bit in this one, that, that this was not surprising to you, you're, you're not looking at it, as a, at it as an upset? No, I knew I was the superior boxer, the, the superior martial artist, uh, super, superior jiu-jitsu. I came from, like I said from the beginning, I had the best training partners in the world in every aspect, in boxing, kickboxing, uh, jiu-jitsu, and MMA. So uh, nothing surprised me except for that I got hit at all. Uh, I think with a full camp, I would have, I would have been flawless. But um, it's whatever. Yeah, I'm not, not surprised. Uh, he got a lot of push. He's been doing great. And uh, he's got a lot of help behind him. And uh, yeah, I just want to wish I had the same push, the same help. I've been in this a long time. I've been nine years. Uh, I was like my 25th fight here in the UFC, and uh, I, I've been in the last few years curious when this is going to pay off, and um, I think it's time. Not now, it's now it's time. And, and one more question for you, Nate. You, know, you have been around the sport for a long time. You fought at 155. You fought at 170. Connor likes to talk a lot. He did at 145 about the power that he has in that left hand. What, what did you think about the left hand? Like you said, you, you didn't get a sparring camp, so you did take some left hands tonight. Was, how would you compare it to some, some of the power that you faced against other guys in the event? I sparred full camps. Uh, I did, uh, I've been sparring with top 10 boxers <clears throat> for, forever. Uh, this Otis Griffin, uh, Omar Henry. I did full camp with uh, <clears throat> Andre Ward a couple fights back when he fought Chad Dawson. And uh, just going in there, you know, I've been hit with everything. The hardest stuff by 168-pound fighters. I spar with uh, he he uh, heavyweight fighters, and I've been hit with everything. So uh, he punches hard. He's, he's, he's a hard-hitting hard little guy, but nothing I never felt before. So, uh, and I expected, I expected if I get hit by anybody, it's probably going to be hard, you know, but... Uh, if you ain't taking me out, you're going to get taken out straight up. Uh, and then a, a question for Connor. You know, we don't know what's, what officially is next for you yet, but you, you mentioned 145. Do you feel like your, your hand is kind of forced, that, that, that you have to go back to 145, otherwise you might have to give up the belt? Is that sort of why that has to be next, or is that something you want to do? Do you want to go back to 145? Um, I weighed in 168 pounds. I didn't, I didn't make anything. I simply yet regularly so. It's 145. Isn't it's it's a it's a cut. It's intense, but I make it and I make it every time. So I think 145 will be next. I'll defend my um, my belt. I believe maybe Nate will fight the Sanyos now. I think after I defend my belt and climb myself back up, I think I will get my shot at that lightweight belt once again. So maybe me and Nate can do it again. In, in your opinion, who should that, that, that shot at 145 go to? Is it Edgar or is it, or is it Aldo? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. It's hard to kind of not give Aldo another go. He's 10 years in the, he was 10 years on the feed. But again, he's a, he, he pulls out a lot. He doesn't show up a lot. Um, Frankie at least gets in there and competes. But, so um, I don't know. I'll keep my ear to the ground and see who who the fans want to see the most. Who's who's what? What are the fans most interested in? Who do they want to see me defend the belt against? Um, but then I'll sit and I'll wait patiently for the lightweight belt to cont be contested, and I'll I'll make my 
way back, back up, you know. I respect Nate, he fought very well with his energy. Um, I felt, I felt I was winning, I won round one. I was winning round two, I felt. Towards the end, he was, he caught me with some shots, he stayed in it. Um, he was very efficient with his energy. Um, but I feel with some adjustments, I will climb back up and, and make my case for that second belt once again. I just have one, one last question for, uh, for Misha. You know, it was no secret how important this fight was to you. You know, not, not that long ago, you were talking about retirement because you weren't sure if you'd ever win a belt. Had you, had you lost this fight, you know, you would have lost to, to Holly and obviously the, the losses to Rousey. So you had a lot on the line. And I'm just wondering, when you go into a fifth round, you know you have five minutes to try and make something happen. Your corner tells you that, that you're behind on the scorecards. Does that feel like a, a lot of time to make something happen? Does it feel like, oh my God, I have no time left. I have one round. Or does it feel like five minutes is more than enough time for me to go in and, and, and do this? It feels like enough time, obviously. You know, I made it happen. Um, the thing about me is, my mentality is it does not matter to me how down I get at any point in a fight. I've been literally knocked down and almost, you know, almost out of it, and I get back up and I win fights. So uh, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get back up. And um, I think that's, you know, someone a champion does. So um, another thing, uh, the Seahawks did not win a championship this year, but I'm from Washington, so I'm really happy to bring this belt back home, and maybe they'll let me raise the 12th man flag now, so you all can put that out there for me. <laughs> Thank you. Question for Holly. Um, Holly, what was going through your mind heading into the fifth and final round? And finally, can you just describe the finish and basically deciding not, not to tap? Going into the fifth round, I thought, we got one more round. I felt good, I felt energetic, I didn't feel too tired. And I thought, let's just keep going with the game plan that's working. And um, sure enough, just got a little bit lazy there for a second. And um, I, don't even, I don't even, as far as tapping, I just thought, got out of it in the second round, I'm gonna get out of it again, next thing you know. I didn't tap, but <laughs> um, I guess in my mind I was just wanting to fight. I'm just going to get out of this. I'm just going to get out of this. I'm just going to get out of this. And um, I thought I'd, uh, <laughs> I have this fight as long as I can get out of this. And I just wanted to keep fighting through it. And uh, there you have it. Went too far. And a, a follow-up to Misha. Um, if you had the choice, who – would get who would get the next fight against you well I don't have a choice yeah. so uh, it doesn't matter to me I don't feel like that's my responsibility that's my management's responsibility and the UFC's responsibility my my job is to show up and defend this belt so it makes no difference to me we'll take two more guys quick Kev. Holly uh, first for you you know you had the highest high when you when you beat Ronda I mean is, is it does this feel worse than that felt good you know losing a fight like this Beating Ronda was a, I mean, I had two fights in the UFC and they said, next up's Ronda. And I said, great, let's do this. And I know it was across the world, the biggest upset. Um, and I know, I know coming into this next fight, it's a whole different fight. I know everybody's expectations were high. What is Holly going to do this time? But every fight is different. And I still feel like I'm learning. And um, it is, this is, this is still the beginning for me. I, mean, I haven't even been doing MMA that long, and I feel like I have a lot to still accomplish in this sport. Um, I mean, the Ronda fight was, it was, it was a big high, but it also was back in November, and I had this fight tonight, which I learned from. All I can do is just straight ahead. What's next? Thank you. Question for Connor: um, When you took Nate down uh, there after after you were hurt, was that you were just trying to buy time there to kind of ride out the rest of the round? Um, I don't know. I was slipping that jab and banging the left hand uh, a few times. It, it worked for me. Even when he added the the left hand behind it, I, I came back in and I my left hand was a hook and his his left hand was a straight. And I, I I was connecting with him and his one was whizzing past the head. But in the second, I pulled and came into my left hand and he just popped a little left straight in there. Um, 
and it caught me off balance and you know but i feel it was simply he was efficient with his energy and i was inefficient and then that's it i i, I shot he he wrapped up the neck i i looked to pass guard but he had that high elbow guillotine so i was forced to roll to my back and then um similar to the chad the mendez one where i rolled and came back to my knees i just hadn't got it in me i ended up on bottom he sh passed the mount really quick really smoothly landed some shots got me to turn when i turned he flattened me pretty quick as well um and then and then sunk the choke there's there's many there's there's many lessons to be um uh learned from the fight but um i'm i'm happy with it you know i'll i'll learn i'll grow and i'll come back i have one more for you and then one quick one for nate I don't, you referenced before, you know, you didn't understand people celebrating another man's victory. I, I assume you were referencing what Jose Aldo tweeted. Did you see that? And, and if you did, can you comment on how you took that? I just think it's, he had an opportunity to show up here, and he didn't. He could be sitting there across, he could be sitting where Nate's sitting right now. He was the first choice. He said, any time, any place, anywhere. And then, it wasn't any time, any place, anywhere. Now another man gets a victory over me and he celebrates it. That's the sign of a loser. That's the sign of somebody. Uh, that's a sign of a runner-up, you know. That's not the sign of a champion, so I am. Um. And then, Nate, uh, Dana said before he left uh, that it was trending to be the biggest pay-per-view, maybe bigger than UFC 100, the biggest ever. You have talked a lot about, yeah, Connor got the hype, but you also brought the crowd out. Do you feel like the fact if it does turn out to be the biggest pay-per-view ever that, you know, you played a big role even in just a short period of promotion? To yeah, because my, my fights are always pull, pulling big numbers, you know. Uh, they always stick me on Fox. For some reason, they were pushing me on those Fox cards. I was bringing more numbers than anybody, but nobody paid attention to that. And uh, I, we got a big, I got a big following between me and my brother. They come in hard, and, and no one ever, no one ever has a bigger following than me ever. You know, so I feel like I brought in a, a lot, and it made the fight a lot more entertaining, a lot more, a lot more interesting than the Dos fight, because, because it's whatever, you know. But and as far as. Uh, energy and stuff. I felt like I was a superior boxer. I felt like I, I won the, uh, I was better on the stand up and then that's why he went for the takedown and the, the weight had nothing to do with it, anything. You know, uh, I, I had to lose some weight. If I had a, a fight at 155, I feel like <clears throat> I could have performed better because I would have had, I would have been on point. I would have had the sparring. I would have had, <clears throat> I would have had a good weight cut like I did my last fight and uh, I had to c come into this Coming to this fight straight, fat boy off the beach in Cabo. <laughs> but it's all good. I felt like I wanted to cut out the superior mar martial artist. Last one, go ahead. This question is for Holly. Holly, uh, uh, are you, I know you say you want to fight tomorrow because I, I'm sure you feel disappointed in everything, but are you going to take this time, to, uh, this opportunity to take any time off, or do you want to really get back in right away? I'll be training right away, and I'll take the fight as soon as they'll give anything to me. Um, it's whatever opportunity they'll give me right now. We'll see where they want to go with this. Um, I mean, <laughs> I do want to rematch. Who doesn't? Anybody that's competitive, I, if, if, if you're – at this point in a career, making making this your career, it's because you have passion for it. It's because you have pride. It's because you have that want for victory, and that is what I want. You know, the biggest thing that hurts right now is my heart, and uh, just got to get back in and work hard. And I, I do want the rematch, but who's to say they'll give it to me right away? If I have to fight somebody else to get there, if I have to fight my way back, that's okay too, because. I'm okay, and I know that I can put in the hard work to do it, and I'm willing to do that. Um, I think the, <laughs> the yeah, <laughs> um, I do. Have, I do have a vacation I have planned, but that's only for five days, you know. Um, I'm gonna be training in the gym before I even go do that, and uh, I'm ready to go as soon as they're ready to give me a fight. And also, Holly, uh, as far as the fight goes, could you go back to round two and tell me what was going through your mind when, you, when it looked like you were in trouble? 
I felt confident in my training that I knew that I could weather the storm. I've, you know, I've, in practice, I've, I have people pushing me all the time. And I just kept thinking about some of those days that we were in round five and they're taking me down, I'm getting back up. They're taking me down, I'm getting back up. And I'm fighting even when it hurts. And I just thought, I've, I've done this in practice. I can push through this, I can get through this. Um, I didn't want her to be on top of me that long. Uh, she's obviously been very good with her top pressure. That's something we worked for. Um, I s it's still learning for me. Uh, but as soon as the round was over, I thought, well, we're one and one. This is the beginning of a three-round fight for me. We're going to start fresh. We're going to come out. We're not going to let that defeat us mentally. Uh, physically, I'm fine. I know I trained hard for it. I know I'm ready to do hard rounds like that. Uh, it takes a lot of energy out of you, but I felt fine. I thought, you know what, we're just going to have to keep going. Uh, that round's for her. And it's it's time to go out there and 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 change change the course of events here, um, which was fine until round five. But uh, yeah, I just it's mistakes I made in the fight. And, and, and just one quick question for Misha. Misha, do you feel like you finally earned something as far as you, you waited so long to to get to this point? Yeah, and I, I have to give a huge thanks to my team. Um, it has been a long road, but I've had a lot of amazing people along uh, along with me, and I feel like some of my coaches are highly underrated. I think I have some of the best coaches in the world, starting with Brian Caraway. I know a lot of people are super haters, but he's the reason why I won this fight tonight. Um, he's been with me since the day one, I, my very first day of MMA training. He taught me like an arm bar and a triangle the very first day. I knew nothing about mixed martial arts. So he's been by my side since I was 19 years old. And uh, he was the head MMA coach for this, this, co you know, this fight. Um, and everything that he said came to fruition. Um, you know, and my head MMA coach, Robert Fallis, phenomenal coach, phenomenal mental coach. He just makes all the puzzle pieces fall into place. And last but definitely, definitely not least, my striking coach, Jimmy Gifford. Obviously, my striking's been improving a lot, you know, to, to be able to even stand in there for, you know, most of five rounds with Holly. I think just is a testament that you know I didn't go down. Um, I didn't. Uh, you know, I was able to hang in there. I was able to get some shots of my own in there, and I, I've been working very, very hard in that department, spending a lot of time with my striking coach. So, uh, just a huge thank you to my team, and um, it does feel good to be here. It's been a long road, and uh, you know, thank you all for coming on this journey with me. I'm excited, but I also feel as long as that's been going, like the hardest part is still still ahead of me. Ground to cover. Thank you, everyone, for an incredible week. Yo. Yo, yo. John Ennick better get a motherfucking 209 tattoo. I'm going to whoop his little ass. Tell you what, for everyone who joined late, uh, I got Nick's instant reaction right after Nate won. So uh, let me show you guys that. All right. All right. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for supporting MMA Heat. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. And uh, anyway, here's uh, Nick.
I said, you better do something right now. If you don't do something right now, two rounds. That's what I said, two rounds. Look at my fights, two rounds. Right, two, right. two rounds and you fight me. Same thing. Did you think your brother was in trouble after the first round? No, or shut you it down, shut it down. Get the shit out of here. Sure. Yep, all right. My jiu is always there for when I hit the ground, but it's always from the boxing, Rachel Price boxing. I, uh, that's usually get what gets a fight there. Nate, this was a spectacular victory, and even more spectacular given the fact you didn't have a training camp for this. Congratulations, sir. Why, why would you need one? I'm an athlete. I'm going to win. We should already be always going to win. I don't want to get a shot out of my brother, Nick Diaz. The man of many men. Damn. Congratulations, sir. That's awesome. Is it too big? As awesome as ever with the win over Connor Here's Joe. I'm here with Connor McGregor. Connor. You took this fight. Oh, she knows. Explaining the fight. How about Los Angeles? Give us your thoughts on Nate as an opponent and what went down here tonight. Uh, I took the chance going up with 70, but Nate came in. He was a. Uh, I thought I took him the first round, but I, I was inefficient with my energy. But I'm humbled in victory or defeat. Stole a motherfucking blue man. Try to run with it. Uh, he took the final shot and I was coming in on 70 and, and doing the job. He, he was efficient. I wasn't efficient. That was, that was how I feel. I feel I was, I had too much arms, too much. But uh, these things happen. I learned, I grow. I took a chance, came away. It didn't work out. Um, it is what it is. I'll, I'll face it like a man, like a champion, and come back and do it again. I'm sure you will, sir, and I look forward to seeing you compete again. Conor McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. I love that from the notorious one. Humble the victory, humble the defeat. This night belongs to Nate Diaz and Misha T. Wow, how things have changed. Conor McGregor defeated for the first time in his UFC career. How do you celebrate, Nick? I'm done. Team 209, how are they celebrating? People, people want to see. They, they, they. Yeah, you know what? Right now, it's over. It ain't no big deal no more. It's a big deal until what, what I said it was going to be. UFC 196. That's why everyone's here. I told him two rounds. Two rounds. Hey, there's something to rounds. You know?